Okay, let's take a look at question three from the take home that you wrote on Friday. So uh, what we've been asked to do was to synthesize this compound, which has some deuterons replacing protons. So we have some deuterium atoms replacing hydrogen atoms in this compound. Uh, oftentimes we want to do these for mechanistic studies, sometimes for enzyme studies, uh, just to get some information about physical organic things or medicinal things. But oftentimes we want deuterium in selected positions. So how do we go about doing that? Uh, well, what we're gonna find out is that we can easily exchange deuterium for hydrogen if they're uh, somewhat acidic. Uh, we can do that by just throwing them in with heavy water as opposed to regular water and the exchange will happen. Gave you some hints here, talked about a directed aldol reaction that we're gonna to have to use a directed aldol reaction. And uh, also talked about the regioselective reduction reactions. All of those are in the notes. Uh, so I tried to steer you towards those notes. Let's take a look. So what we've been asked to synthesize is this. We were told we could start from acetophenone. So let's take a look at our notes. And here we see uh, the crossed aldol condensation using our ketones. These are gonna be our nucleophiles and these are gonna be our electrophiles. We'll probably end up doing this as a directed aldol reaction. We're gonna, acetophenone is our ketone, and we're going to react it with LDA to form the elate anion, and then we're gonna add to that the appropriate aldehyde so that we can make the connectivity that we need to make. Uh, let's just pull this into ChemDraw so we can take a look at a couple of things. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of some of this. I don't need that. But what I wanna see is, okay, we're starting from acetophenone. Here we see acetophenone. And we react acetophenone in this case with uh, benzaldehyde, and we form a new carbon-carbon bond right there. And if we, there. So that's gonna be between the alpha carbon and the carbonyl carbon is our new bond. So if we take a look, there's acetophenone. This is our new bond that we're gonna form. So then if we just pull from that, oops. No, I don't think I got it all. There we go. We get it, yeah. Let's move me, there we go. There we go. So if we connect these two in an aldol condensation, we should get this framework. We're gonna have a double bond between this carbon and this carbon, but that's okay. We still have the correct framework. Uh, and we have to get some deuterium. We need to get deuterium on the alpha positions. So how do we do that? Well, we can do that fairly easy by doing these exchange reactions. We take acetophenone and we mix it in with some water. We might have to put some acetonitrile or something in there to solubilize it throw in some base, we're gonna get an exchange reaction. The base is gonna pull off a proton and then it's gonna float away. And when that elate anion finds a molecule of water, it's gonna find a molecule of deuterated water and it's gonna pull off a deuterium. As long as we stir this around for a little while, uh, we'll completely exchange all of the deuterium. Sure, we might find a molecule or two that has a hydrogen in there, uh, but it's gonna be very few. Almost all of them are gonna be completely deuterated. We can do the same thing with our aldehyde. Notice that we exchange the protons on the alpha carbon. We do not touch the aldehydic carbon. That will remain a 
a regular hydrogen atom. It won't be a deuterium. So once we do that, we can go ahead and uh, do the rest of our synthesis, which is pretty easy. We can take our deuterated acetophenone, react it with uh, lithium diisopropyl amide at minus 78 degrees, and that will pull off the acidic deuteron, not a proton, a deuteron in this instance, and we get the enolate, and all we have to do is slowly drop in our aldehyde, and we'll end up getting this compound. Notice now that is the same framework, right? Same framework there, we just have a double bond, but we have all the deuteriums in place. So all we have to do now is the final step, which is a hydrogenation reaction. And we have to use the right catalyst. If we tried anything else, let's take a look up here. Here's the other slide I was talking about. Uh, we can make an alpha beta unsaturated compound and we can reduce only the carbonyl or we can reduce just the carbon-carbon double bond or we can reduce everything. Now we have to use this palladium on carbon to reduce just the carbon-carbon double bond. If we try to do the hydrogenation with nickel or metallic platinum, we're gonna reduce everything. So we have to use this palladium on carbon uh, to selectively reduce the double bond. And there we go. That's all we had to do for this reaction. So this was much simpler, I think, than it appeared. The trick was to know that you can exchange those deuteriums. And if you thought about it, you would exchange them both at the beginning. Many people didn't. Many people actually exchanged the deuterons on this. And then they did a bunch of chemistry, uh, which would not have worked quite as well because uh, they would have had mixtures of deuterium and hydrogen in their products. Uh, there was other ways to do it where you started off with these two compounds. You could also do that because once you make this compound, if you had the hydrogens, you can actually just treat that in base and you'll end up with the same thing. If we take this with its hydrogenated equivalent and uh, put it in water with uh, hydroxide and heavy water, we would get the same exchange reaction occur. So we could have done that as well. And that's it for question three.